guys, I'm Sug, and if you're new here, make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on my post notifications if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video. Hey guys, it's Sug. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can make a GFX in Paint.net. So, first thing that you want to do is open up your avatar that you just rendered. If you don't know how to render an avatar, go ahead and check out my previous video where I show you guys how you can render a Roblox avatar. You can render yourself, you can render a friend, or any other avatar that you would like. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't already. So to open the render that you just made, go ahead and go up to the left corner, click File, and then Open. Now go ahead and go to where you keep all of your renders. I already have that open and go ahead and find the one that you would like to use. I'm going to be using the render that I had just made for my tutorial on how to make a render. Now the next thing that you want to do is open up a blank canvas. To do that, go to File and click New. You can go ahead and put the width or the height that you would like. Personally, I like mine to be a square, so I'm going to do 1000. 200 width by 1200 height. Once you have the width and the height all set, go ahead and click OK. Now the next thing that I do personally is I find a background. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Google Images and find a background that I would like to use. For this, I think I'm going to use either a sunset background or a beach background. I'm going to search up a sunset background first. Go ahead and scroll through all the images, find one that you would like to use. Hmm. They're all really pretty. I think I am going to use this one. So go ahead and click on it, and then you want to copy it. Copy image, go ahead and go back into paint.net, and on the background layer, go ahead and paste it, which you can do control V. Now, if this comes up, you want to click keep canvas size. And go ahead and size it to whatever length width you would like it to be. I think I'm going to have it like that. Next thing I do is I go to this Layers tab right here. If you do not have the Layer tab, go up into the right corner and click the little papers and you'll get the Layers tab. Same thing with the colors, your tools, and your history. So for the Layers tab, I go down here and I click New. This will bring up a new layer. So I'm going to go to my render now. I'm going to highlight it using the first selection over here. I'm going to copy it by using Control C. I'm going to paste it into my layer 2 using Control V. Now you can move this however you would like and size it however you would like to. I'm going to make it bigger. I do like mine to fit up most of the canvas. Okay, that looks about good. Now the next thing that I usually do is I blur out my background a little bit. I don't really like my background to be fully there. I like it to be more in the back, which blurring the picture will help that. So go ahead and click on your background layer. Go up into effects, blurs, and there's plenty of blurs here blur I use is the third one. Go ahead and click on that. And you can blur it however much you'd like to. I usually do about like 15 to 20. When you're done, click OK. And you're all good. Now, for my GFXs, I usually like to put a border around it. So that is what I'm going to do for this. I'm going to open up another layer. I'm going to go up to Effects. And I'm going to go to Render and click Borders and Shapes. Now, this is a plugin which doesn't come 
with paint.net that you will download. So I will leave the link to all plugins down in the description below. I like my first border to be white. I'm going to make it a width of about 30. I'm going to click OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the magic wand tool. I'm going to click the inside of the box. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to go back to effects, back to render and borders and shapes. And now I'm going to make a black box, which this month I'm going to make half the size of the original one. So for me, this is 15. Click OK. And while this is still selected by your magic wand, I'm going to go to effects and to blurs and I'm going to blur this a little bit. Click OK and unselect it. I'm going to go back to my white layer. I'm going to go to the properties in the layers tab and I am going to fix the opacity until about 80. You can do whatever you like for this, but this is what I personally prefer. I'm going to go into the black one now and put the opacity to about 50. As you can see, this gives you like a nice little look around the border of your canvas. This is personally what I like, but if you don't like that, don't worry about it. You can do whatever you would like. Now I'm going to add some more effects into the background. I'm going to go to my background tab. I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to go back to my Google Images. And I'm going to search seamless stars. This is something that I usually put on all of my GFXs. I don't know what it is about it, but it just makes the GFX look really pretty. This is the one that I use. Go ahead and paste it on there. I'm going to make it bigger so it fits the whole canvas. Once you have that on your canvas, you want to go to the Properties tab where it says Blending Mode. You want to click this and you want to go to Additive. You can change Opacity if you would like to. Make it, make it so you can see more, make it so you can see less, however you would like it. I'm going to put mine to about 120. That looks good. You can search up any other effects you'd like to. Personally, this is what I like. Now, I'm going to add some text, which go to the text button. I'm going to make my color white. Also for the text, you do want to make a new layer. Everything that you add on, you always want to make a new layer so you're not going over anything. Go ahead and click and add your text. I'm just going to put my YouTube name, which is Sucktastic, as all of you know. And to make this text bigger, when I go up to where it says font, to the number, click down the drop down box, make it however big you like to. Now I can also choose a new font, which I am going to do. I'm going to go with a font called Delicious Adventures. This is a font that I have downloaded onto Paint.net, so I will leave a link in the description box below where you can download more fonts. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. That's about good for me. Now I do like this to be more centered, so I'm going to go to Effects object align and sensor both. This is also a plugin and again the link to all the plugins will be in the description box below. Now I'm just going to select this, go over to the move selected pixels tab, click it and then with my arrow keys on my keyboard I'm going to move it down. Perfect. Now with my text I do like to give it some shadow below it or under it. So in my Layers tab, I'm going to click the layer that has my text on it, and then I'm going to click this, which is Duplicate Layer. Now, this makes another layer of the same thing. So the layer that's under it, 
I'm going to go to this, I'm going to select it, go to my most selected pixels, click it, and on my arrow key, I'm going to move it three times to the right and three times down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my properties and fix the opacity. I usually put it to about 103. Now I'm going to add a black shadow under it. I'm going to go to effects, object, and drop shadow. We're going to make it black. You can fix the blurring if you want it more blurred, if you want it wider or thinner, however you like it. This just makes it so the text pops out a lot more. And you can also add a watermark if you would like to. I usually put mine in the top right corner. Or top left corner actually. And I'm going to change the opacity so you can't see it as much. All right, I think we're all done here. Now the last step is to save it. So you wanna to go to file, save as, and you want to go to the place where you keep all of your saved GFXs. Okay. Now where it says save as type right now, it is in a PDN file type. You don't want it in PDN. You want it in a PNG. So make sure that you always change it to PNG. Then go ahead and name it whatever you would like. I'm going to name it Sarcastic Tutorial. Go ahead and click enter or save, click OK, and click flatten. Now, what this does is it brings it to one layer all together. All right, you guys, that's it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something, and I hope you guys will use this in the future. If you have any suggestions for future videos, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.